Hello and welcome to Rathod's IES. Today in this session, we are going to discuss current affairs of 19th April 2024. So before seeing our news analysis, today I want to make a very important announcement. So you know that Rathod's IES started offline branch in Hyderabad. And we are going to start our new offline batch from 27th May 2024. And we came up with this 50% fee refund policy if you are not clearing even your prelims. Why? Because we are very much confident that you are going to clear its examination. And if you are not going to clear even your prelims and what are the amount that you paid. So we are going to return 50%. So why we are that much confident? Because of important features of this course that we are providing. So first one is we are providing here 5 hours of daily your GS classes. So we are going to deal with two subjects every day. Okay, two and a half hours one subject and two and a half hours another subject. And after that we are not going to leave you simply like other institutes are doing. So you have to stay in this institute for extra 5 study hours. And in this 5 study hours we are going to have the revision of the topics that are discussed in your GS class and every day you will be having prelims practice and mains question practice. And after your prelims, we are going to analyze like what you have read. So whether you are retaining that or not, whether you are understanding how the question is asking from that topic or not. So you will be understanding like how questions will be framed from that topic and you will be starting visualizing the things from the day one and you will be also writing your main answers from the day one and what are the main answers you are writing there will be evaluation by the faculty and whatever the study hours we are providing in that study space you will be also having this faculty support so this is the thing which is missing because if you are not having faculty support how can you clear your doubts so here we are providing free study space that too with faculty support and you will be having regular prelims come mains test and one more speciality of our course is you will be having one to one mentorship. So one to one mentorship with me and other mentors and also with toppers so that you can have a right direction. And next one is there will be complete coverage of NCRTs. And we are exclusively focusing on CSAT. CSAT is becoming like a devil for the students, right? So here we are going to see the CSAT. And next one is exclusive focus on current affairs. So we are going to cover at least two years of contemporary current affairs. Because the questions from prelims and mains, they are coming from these contemporary issues. We are focusing on that. Okay. So in this way, what are the study material we are providing like value added material and current affairs compilation that will add value for your preparation. Okay, so you can believe us and you can trust me especially and you can come and join this course and admissions are going on. And one more thing I want to say is the batch size is very limited, only 70 students per batch and admissions are going on. And there are very few, uh, few seats are, li are available. So you can book your seats and you can do the registration. And where is the address? Address is at Steel Bridge. Steel Bridge, pillar number 36. And this Rathor's Ice is present on third and fourth floor above Winner Study Hall. And it is in Ashok Nagar, Hyderabad. Okay. So take this offline admission so it is very useful in this preparation okay and you're going to achieve your dream within a very less time if you join this course and now let us see our today hindu newspaper and let us see like which are the articles important from our examination point of view so first important article here is impossible to tamper evms at any stage EC in Supreme Court. So actually one petition filed in Supreme Court. So to understand this topic, you need to know the background, right? So first let us focus on background. So here, this is the issue between EVMs and VVPATs. 
so what was the background the background was like one petition so this is a petition which is regarding tally evms with vv pats all evms with vv pats so this petition filed in supreme court and supreme court asked election commission of india whether the tallying of evms with all all evms with this vv pats will be possible or not and now eci said that no we can't so this is the thing why it is in news so here already you know that there are lots and lots of controversies which are going on regarding this evms so you have to see this topic very detail and there is a chance of getting both your prelims and as well as mains based question from this topic and especially this article is important from your gs paper to under your polity and governance and here you have to see some dimensions like eci the first one is you have to see eci and you have to see what is the role of eci in ensuring free and fair elections so already this question appeared in your upsc mains and this one is you have to see like constitutional provisions of eci that is around article 324 to article 329 and even appointment of members of cec and ec they are in news so from this area also you can expect prelims based question in your 2024 and next one is you have to see like eligibility criteria and whether this appointment process present in our constitution or not and what is the removal tenure everything every area of eci is very important and next one is you have to see even this topic called as electoral reforms okay electoral reforms so actually one more issue also is a news like so before evms we used to use like ballot papers okay ballot papers and there is also one more question like can we move back to ballot papers and you have to see like some facts regarding this evms so actually many students might not be knowing that this evms of india we are not only using in india for elections so have you watched this movie of jawan so that movie here they will be tracking or they will be trapping this ev evms right is or no so actually uh, we are not only using this evms for conducting of elections in india but for other countries also for elections we are lending evms okay so here there was one issue like so evms are hacked but here eci said that evms are not like mobile phones like that so they cannot be hacked just they are like calculator so they will be calculate the number of votes and this is a challenge which made by eci that if anyone who is hacking this evm so we are going to reward them so like that but no one have hacked this evms so this is a also one issue which had been in the news from last 2 to 3 years okay so all these are some current events that happened regarding this evms and we are going to see this topic in detail and this topic is important from your polity governance which comes under your gs paper 2 and now let us see this article in detail so here supreme uh, supreme court asked election commission of india to see whether calculating or tallying of this all evms with this vv pats or not so election commission came up with an answer so election commission said that it is impossible to tamper that to deal with evms with evms at any stage even as supreme court reserved this judgment on pleas that 97 crores registered voters in the country and they have a right to a more transparent electoral system with or without evms so whenever there is any doubt which created in minds of public like something is going wrong in voting means how can we ensure that free and fair elections as you all know that india is a democratic country and in india people have the power to elect their own representative like if there is any 
any uh, negative thing which is created in the mind of people means we have that is the responsibility of government and responsibility of this constitutional bodies like ECI which is responsible for ensuring of free and fair elections need to take the responsibility and need to be accountable right so here judiciary also intervened and asked the election commission like how can you ensure free and fair elections so this is a petition which is filed by the people okay so this is the question and if you see the details it said that the assurance from the top poll body so evms they were perfect and they came on the eve of first phase of lok sabha elections so we are going to have this first phase of lok sabha elections so here if we, uh, eci said that yes we have this evms they are in perfect condition so court has here in the petitions seeking cross verification of 100% evm votes with vv pat paper slips so why people are asking like 100 percentage of tallying of evm votes with vv pats because as of now here we are checking this or verify or tallying this evm with this vv pat paper slips only in five randomly selected polling booth in a constituency so in a single constituency only five randomly selected evms or like tallied with this vv pat so this is one important issue and if you see some details regarding this tallying of evms with this vv pats so at present only 10% of vv pats and vote counts from evms they are cross verified that means cross checked and apart from increasing the mandatory tallying of vv pats with evms supreme court now issued a notice to election commission of india on two other related issues regarding tallying of evms with this vv pats so here the directions are like to make it mandatory for returning officer to other hand counting of all vv pat slips of every polling station where the margin of victory is very narrow okay less than 3% so actually if you see like after counting so we will be knowing like who won the elections right so whenever there is a very narrow margin which is less than 3 percentage so in that polling booths so returning officer need to count or need to tally evm votes with this vv pat so it's a first important thing and this one is it is also supreme court is also making it mandatory for poll panel to ask returning officer to order hand counting of all vv pat slips of all the polling stations where the discrepancy between machine counting total and hand counting total in respect of 5% sample evms taken together is more than 1% so in these areas okay in these areas where there is some discrepancy that is differences between this machine counting and as well as hand counting in total in the respect of 5% of sample of evms taken together is more than 1% so whenever what happens like they are going for tallying of evms with this vv pats so normally we can uh, we already know that around 10 percentage of vv pats counts from the evms are cross verified right so actually here if you see in every polling uh, in, in in every constituency so there are five uh, five randomly selected evms so whenever there is difference which is coming like which is more than 1% so in those areas we have to go for tallying of this evms with this vv pats so these are the two important conditions which made mandatory by supreme court okay so what is this vvpd that is voter verifiable paper audit trail so you have to know this as well so if you see this vv pats it is an independent verification printer machine so if you have right to vote and if you have experience of voting so if you have press the button in in voting machine that is evms so within some seconds you will be seeing like uh, there will be small box and in that box you will be seeing like one printed slip will be coming and on that uh, the political party symbol will be displayed for 7 seconds and it will be cutting down and it will be falling in the box that is called as vv pats okay so when a voter presses a button in evm a paper slip is printed through vv pat and this vv pats contain these things so first one is poll symbol and second one is name of the candidate and later on so it allows voter to verify his or her choice and after being visible to the voter from a glass case in the vppt so it will be displayed for 7 seconds and that paper will be cut and it will be dropped into the drop box 
so this is this vv pads okay and these vv pads can be assessed by polling officers only so these are the some important facts that you have to know regarding this topic and now let us move on to next important topic so here you can see one bright image so what is this image so this image is a volcanic eruption so where in indonesia so here you have to know like which is the mountain okay which is a volcanic mountain that erupted so here i want to give you one tip students so if you are covering current affairs for your prelims 2024 so make this chart volcano name and you have to see type of volcano type of volcano and you have to see like in which country it is located okay so in this way you will be getting around 5 to 10 for sure volcanic eruptions in a year across the world so here if you see this image itself it's saying that it is mount ruang okay mount ruang it is in volcan it is in indonesia and one more important fact you have to search is which type of volcano so you can write like mount ruang it is in indonesia it is a strato volcano okay so volcano is very important topic and repeatedly you will be getting questions from that volcano in your prelims so here you have to see like which is that volcano which is that mountain name and which is the type of volcano and country and this type of volcano you will be studying in your ncrts okay we have different types of volcanoes and you have to even remember the names as well from your static so now let us see this topic in detail so what happens so here in this volcano chapter you have to know what is this volcano and especially you have to see like important rocks so whenever volcanic eruption happen magma which comes outside for example let us take this is a volcano so here we have magma and this is the opening that is called as vent so whenever this liquid material which is present inside the earth surface so this is earth surface and inside the earth surface it is present it is called as magma so what it is called as it is called as magma and the same liquid which is coming outside after volcanic burst and now it is called as lava that is very important difference between magma and lava so you can get a directly a prelims question regarding the difference of magma and lava and this magma or lava which is very important for responsible for primary rocks so this primary rocks are also called as igneous rocks so in the types of rocks we have majorly three types so first one is igneous second one is sedimentary and third one is metamorphic rocks so this rocks are responsible for this formation of igneous rocks and here you have to see one more important topic that is landforms so in this landforms we have extrusive landforms and we have intrusive landforms and from this landforms there is a high chance of getting your prelims question and this topic you can see directly in your ncrt so if possible you can make the diagram like for example in intrusive we have bacolith facolith lacolith sills dikes etc and in the extrusive we have like different types of rocks okay so these are some areas that you have to see and even you can see like different types of volcanoes we have like a strato volcano composite volcano okay like that and you have to see one more thing that is what are the gases or what are the substances which are released whenever this volcano burst is happening okay so recently one volcano burst happened volcano eruption and that led to the releasing of lot of ash and that led to the formation of a thick cloud for kilometers so that it will be having 100% impact on climate change so what will be the impact of this ash in the atmosphere which released by volcano so whether it is decreasing the global warming or increasing the global warming 
So like that also you can expect a question. Okay. So in these all areas you have to be very much focused. And now let us see the notes of that topic especially what is this Mount Ruang. Okay. Clear. I hope you are understanding the things. So if you are understanding the things and if you are understanding like how question can be framed. And if you are understanding the way of my teaching. And many students they are loving my way of teaching. I am very very thankful for that. Okay, like I am very happy that my teaching is useful for someone. Okay, I am very very happy for that. And one request from my side here is, please click the Google review. So I am giving the PDF. So in that PDF of this notes, which is posted in Telegram, I am also adding the link, Google li review link. So click on that and please give your rating and review. Okay, so this will be very helpful for me. So if you want, if, if you want to show the gratitude towards me, so do that. That's it. I'm not expecting anything more than that. Okay. So it is my sincere request. Yes. Now let us see the context. Here Mount Ruang erupted several times in Indonesia. Especially it is present in the outermost region. Because of this eruption of this Mount Ruang. Now the number of people they want to evac evacuate. So they, they have to like they have to move away forcefully. Because as you know that inside the earth, for example, this is volcano. So this is magma, this is earth surface, this is vent, which is called as opening. So magma will be present at a very high temperature. So as you all know that whenever we are moving inside from the earth surface, there will be increasing of temperature and there will be radioactivity and there will be increasing of pressure. So because of increasing of pressure, because of this radioactivity and because of temperature, so we can see movement of magma in a conventional cell. So because of this movement of magma, even this movement of magma in this conventional cell, in this conventional cell, it is also one of the important reason for the movement of the plates. Okay, it is also an important movement of the important reason for this movement of plates as well. So we can also relate this plate tectonic theory with this magma. Clear? Understood? Okay. So now let us see only the facts regarding this Mount Ruang. So Mount Ruang, it is a stratovolcano and it is located in this North Sulawesi province of Indonesia. It is very important. And we can see like regular activity in this Mount Ruang. So actually what is meaning of the stratovolcanoes? They are normally like conical shaped and they have like a very steep okay very steep because of formation of very viscous and sticky lava so if at all this lava is like very sticky we can see like steep slopes when lava it like very viscous and watery means they will be flowing so that we will be not seeing like a sticky slopes uh, or steep slopes there and next one here is stato volcano often produced explosive eruptions and even lots of amounts of the gas will be released whenever the explosion of this volcano will happen. And if you see like Indonesia, so you have to know one important concept here. So if you are talking about islands, so we have like single islands. Okay, we have like single islands. Okay, like single islands. And we have like this way in the form of arc. And sometimes we have group of islands together. Okay. So in here we these are the types of islands. So if you study islands topic in your physiography. Then you will be seeing like three different types of islands. So first one is single island. Second one is island arc. Whenever islands are forming in a form of arc. They are called as island arc. So can you tell me an example of island arc. You have seen in map. Like for example, we have Japan. Japan is an example for island arc. And next one is group of islands together is called as archipelago. So here Indonesia is an example of archipelago nation. And it is experiencing frequent seismic and volcanic activity because of location. Location of this Indonesia which is located in this Pacific ring of fire. So again one more concept. So what does this Pacific ring of fire? So this Pacific ring of fire is a region where these tectonic plates are colliding that stretches from Japan through Southeast Asia and across this Pacific basin and because of this movement like especially 
in this plate tectonics concept so in this concept of plate tectonics so you'll be studying about three types of plates okay let me explain them as well so you'll be studying about three types of plate movements first one is convergent plate movements and next one is divergent plate movements and next one is third one will be our transform okay third one will be our transform plate movements so if you're talking about convergence plate movements so these two plates for example it is plate one plate two they are moving towards each other that is called as convergence and divergence means this plate one this is plate two they are moving away from each other that is called as divergent and transform is like sliding movement okay by over one another it is called as transform so actually in this pacific ocean region we can see this convergent plate movements so there are many major plates and minor plates are there so there are convergence the moving of plates together is happening in this pacific ocean region and we are calling it as pacific ring of fire so in this pacific ring of fire so this will be like most seismically active so because of this this region is very much vulnerable to earthquake and as well as volcanoes and if you see this divergent plate movement it is seen in this atlantic ocean region so i don't know whether you know this fact or not like which is the biggest sea largest that is pacific ocean but day by day day by day the size of this pacific ocean is decreasing because of this uh, plate movements and the size of this atlantic ocean is is increasing so this is the fact according to geography clear and now let us see like which are the plates which are converging in this pacific ocean region so we have eurasian north american john d fuca cocos caribbean nazca plate antarctic indian australian philippine and other smaller plates so they mainly encircle this large pacific plate so that we can see like mostly the volcanoes and earthquakes happens in this region and this region is very much vulnerable okay so let us see this volcano so this is this ruang mountain and we can see like crater so what is this crater so again one more concept here so whenever the burst of this volcano is happening so because of the excessive pressure excessive heat here so even the tip of this volcano will be also erupted so volcano will be becoming like this so this landform is called as crater okay this landform is called as crater and if water is filled in this crater we are calling it as a crater lake for example lonar lake is a crater lake okay and this red color region is pacific ring of fire clear and now let us move on to next topic so let us move on to like states page so in the city page there is nothing much important you can simply skip this uh, states page okay don't worry and let us see this states page so in states page i found like very small article but it is very important yes here it is title says over 21000 birds to be culled in alafuza today so here the keyword is culling so what is the meaning of culling culling means nothing but if you want to kill the bird so we will be just breaking the neck so whenever the cervical part or cervical bones they are striked then automatically we will see like death right so even hang to death means something but the cervical bones will be get displaced so that that will cause us the death in the same way we are going for killing of birds by just breaking off its neck it is called as culling so why we are going for culling because of avian influenza so this avian influenza is also very important concept and we are going to see from basics okay and this topic is important from your science and technology point of view and you can get a chance of getting the at least statements of this avian influenza in your prelims 2024 so please be focus so why it is a news animal husbandry department will carry out bird culling operations 
in avian influenza that is bird flu infected regions in kerala so as a center also had notified that the outbreak of this disease is going on so because of this center government came up with establishment of around 8 rapid response teams to cull birds so what is this culling of birds so culling of bird it is a commercial practice normally seen in this poultry okay poultry farming so birds are moved to the layer house so when they are visibly examined like whenever they are very weak and whenever they are getting any infection then they will be culled so avian influenza it is also known as bird flu and it is highly contagious viral infection so it is normally affecting the birds okay so to prevent the spillovers and to prevent the outbreak of this h5n1 that is causing avian influenza so normally we will be going for safe disposal of dead birds and even wearing this ppe that is personal protective equipment and even handling the birds and if they are finding like bird is suffering from that avian influenza that will be like quarantine and if there is no choice then they will go for culling of affected animals so actually this avian influenza which often referred to as bird flu and is like a very high contagious viral infection and this infection which primarily affects birds particularly wild birds and as well as domestic poultry so we're talking about types here so we have influenza type a so this influenza type a which mainly affects animals including birds and we have influenza type b which is affecting humans and influenza type c which is infects humans and pigs but very rare compared to that of a and b influenza and influenza d which is mainly affecting only cattle okay so these are the different types of influenza and we have sub types so avian influenza they can also affect humans like h5n1 h7n3 h7n7 h7n9 h9n2 like that so only humans will be affected by this wine that is h1n1 h1n2 and h3n2 and there are many sub types which are based on this viral strain okay like h component and n component and now let us move on to our hindu and that's all in state space there is nothing much important and you can directly move on to editorial page okay i moved very fast <laughs> okay so in this editorial page there is one article so this article it is about war of attrition so it is about maoism and nationalism so in yesterday's class we discussed everything from basic basic level regarding maoism and nationalism so you can refer yesterday's class for this topic and if you move on here you can see like india's nuanced approach in the south china sea so actually south china sea it is like a disputed area between china and countries to sharing boundary with the south china sea all the countries sharing boundary with south china sea they are having dispute with china so here the tragedy is i will let you explain you in detail so here this article is talking about south china sea right so this article is important from your gs paper to under international relations so if you are talking about the south china sea it is sharing boundary with china and many other countries are there so many other countries like philippines japan so they are sharing boundary right so here china already you know that china is policy is is following the policy called as aggressive expansionist policy so it is following aggressive expansionist china is following this aggressive expansionist policy so china is not only having dispute where it is sharing land that is continental dispute but even countries are sharing with water boundary like even in maritime area okay 
maritime region also we are having dispute especially one maritime issue here is south china sea and also in this east china sea so in east china sea and south china sea it is having dispute but normally here south china sea will be in news because of three island nations you have to know those three islands first one is parcel islands sparkly islands and scarborough islands so these are the three disputed islands in the south china sea region okay now why it is in news india supported philippines so philippines have an issue with china in the south china sea regarding the island or island nation and india supported this philippines so now it is becoming a controversy between india and china so that is the issue and now we are going to see this article in detail and this topic is important from gs paper 2 and actually i want to give you the like dimensions so you have to see like why india intervened in this philippines and chinese issue so why india supported this philippines and you have to see like what is the significance of this south china sea and you have to see even like what is the relationship between india and philippines in which areas we are having cooperation in which areas we are having like dispute and you have to see even map of philippines okay and you have to see like and you have to see one more concept called as nine dash line which came up with china and you have to see like ruling of icj international court of justice so regarding the issue between philippines and china in the south china sea so they went to icj but ruling it is in favor of philippines but chinese is not accepting that judgment of icj and even you can remember one more concept okay regarding philippines just now i forgot that dimension okay let me give uh, please give me like one minute of time so that i can cover that point as well philippines icj yeah that is unclos unclos so here you have to see like what is unclos that is united nation convention of law of seas so this unclos which says about the jury jurisdiction okay jurisdiction of a country in what in water so if you are talking about land for example this is land so here we are having clear cut boundaries between the countries but if this land area which is present or having a water boundary so who can divide a border or who can make the border in the water so there is no chance right so for that here we have united nation law of convention of seas which says like it is saying like till 200 nautical miles it comes under jurisdiction of that country till here till here okay beyond this it will comes under high seas area so high seas area is not a property of a single country it is property of all countries together that is international property okay so these all are the dimensions that you have to see from this article and we are going to see that in detail okay so if you are talking about india and south china sea in march 2024 our external affairs minister union external affairs minister jay shankar ji he articulated in a joint statement he he was on visit to this manila and philippines and he made a joint statement india is giving full support for the philippines in upholding its national sovereignty in this south china sea region so a joint statement 2023 between new delhi and manila also called for china to other rule based maritime order so already icj gave the judgment and india and philippines they both said that Phil, uh, chinese they have to follow the judgment of icj because in 2016 the judgment which is in favor of philippines and here you have to see like why every country is focusing on the south china sea because it is having huge importance or significance so what is our significance and this significance will becomes like a main question you have to focus on this significance so first one is strategic location south china sea is strategically located and it is bordered by china taiwan to the north and indo chinese peninsula 
like it contains like vietnam vietnam thailand malaysia and singapore to the west and indonesia and brunei and these are the countries which are sharing border with the south china sea so here you can get a prelims question okay in 2024 like which of the following countries are sharing boundary with the south china sea okay rather than china so or else they also give you like uh, option will be like china also so it is like china taiwan and we have vietnam thailand malaysia singapore and we have indonesia brunei and philippines so these are the countries which are sharing boundary with the south china sea and we have one important strait so from straits also you can get question okay so straits are nothing but small water channels they are connecting two big water bodies so it is the meaning of strait and even because of this uh, gulf of aden red sea mediterranean sea news so you have to see like important straits from there also you can get a map based question so if we're talking about this Luzon strait it is with the philippines and it is connected by taiwan strait and east china sea by okay sea will be connected with this thing and if you're talking about the other significance so we have trade so global shipping that is one third of international like con uh, all the earth or the globe ships which are passing through the south china sea and 64 percentage of chinese maritime trade which passes through the south china sea and even over 55 percentage of India's trade which passes to the South China Sea and Malacca Strait. And if you're talking about fishing ground, so here we can get like good fish here, good fishes. And actually uh, fish, it is providing like vital source for livelihood and food security of millions people in this region. So here it is also very important. Fishing grounds are also very important. And next one is what is the dispute is about? So the core of the South China Sea dispute which involves like competing claims over land features like island, reefs, etc. in the surrounding waters. So here involved parties in disputes are like China, Brunei, Taiwan, Philippines, Vietnam and Malaysia. And even one more issue is China came up with its concept of 9 dash line and it is claiming entire 90 percentage of the South China Sea. It is also an important issue. And especially it is claiming its control over the Spartley Islands, Parcel Islands and Scarborough Islands. Okay, and if you are talking about areas of cooperation between India and Philippines. Yes, India and Philippines they started relations like 1949 itself. Okay, and later on we have improved our relations from 2014 after we came up with this activist policy. Okay. And later on, we are focusing on political security, trade, industry, and people-to-people -people relations. And if you're talking about bilateral trade, so we are having a very good trade. It is around US dollars, 3 billion mark. So it had been reached this 3 million mark in 2022 to 2023. And India also exporting some important goods like engineering goods, automobile parts, and petroleum products, pharmaceuticals, and bovine meat oil seeds, tobacco, brown nuts to Philippines and even from Philippines also we are importing something. So which are those goods? So we are importing like electrical machinery, semiconductors, ores, copper, plastic, pearls, waste from food industry and even animal fodder. So these are the products that we are exporting and importing. And next from health and medicine point of view also, yes we have good cooperation. So, Philippines was the first Asian member to grant emergency use authorization for Bharat Biotech Covaxin. Okay, so Covaxin, like we know about this, what are the struggles we faced in development of vaccine during this COVID-19 period. And here, so Philippines became the first Asian country to grant emergency use authorization of this vaccine. And currently, Philippines also accounts for 20% of India's pharmaceutical exports to Asia. Okay, and India being the one of the largest supplier of medicine to here yeah, Philippines. And even in this field of science and technology also, we have bilateral program of cooperation. And India signed a deal with this Philippines to send BrahMos. Okay, BrahMos anti-ship variant of this BrahMos with a supersonic cruise missile. And I want to give you one main question students, so please do this. Evaluate the evolving relationship between India and Philippines considering geopolitical and geoeconomic dimensions. So try to write answer. 
within 150 words it is very easy right and now let us move back to our newspaper so in this opinion page i found nothing much important but here you have to see like what are the reasons for the floods in dubai so actually you know that dubai is a desert city but we can see like 259.5 mm of rain which happened so it led to the floods and actually you know that what is this the reason for this because of climate change okay so because of this climate change the results are going to become forest and forests are going to become desert so this is one example and if you are talking about this text and context so there are two articles that are important we are going to see those two articles so first one it is about investment so investment is very important for the development of the country yes or no if you are getting investment then only we are going to go for growth and development but this article is saying that there is decreasing of private investment and it is saying like what is the reason so it is saying only one important reason you have to keep that in mind that is decreasing of private consumption so whenever decreasing of consumption of people so how the investments come no right that is the important reason it is cited here and this article is important from your economy which comes under gs paper 3 clear now let us see this article in detail so if you see the context it says that private investment witnessed a steady decline since 2011 to 2012 and the government has been hoping that large Indian corporations would step in and ramp up investment. So actually one important step taken by our central government in 2019 was like so whatever the tax need to paid by companies okay whenever companies you are getting profits on those profits they have to pay tax to the government yes or no so what does this tax call as so this tax which is paid by companies industries or factories to government it is called as corporate tax what it is called as it is called as corporate tax and in 2019 one significant step taken by government is it reduced tax from 30 percentage to 22 percentage and now here 22% of tax should be paid by these corporates. So whenever there is decreasing of tax, government, what will be the exception of government? Like what is expecting? So it will be expecting like increasing of private investment. But instead of increasing, there is decreasing of private investment is happening. So this is one cause of concern. So there is failure of private investment as measured by private gross fixed capital formation. So here this private investment it is measured by measuring this gross fixed capital formation okay but it is decreasing day by day so it is one cause of concern so what is this gross fixed capital formation so this point is very important from your prelims you can directly expect a question okay what is this gfcf so this gross fixed capital formation which is referring to the growth in size of fixed capital in the economy so the economy whenever there is increasing of fixed capital that is called as gfcf so what is the meaning of this fixed capital so fixed capital it is referring like the things like buildings or machinery okay they require investment right so they are created with the investment those are called as gross fixed capital formation so the issue is private gfcf can serve as a rough indicator so by using this gfcf we can identify like how private sector is investing in the economy or how they are willing to invest so not only this gfcf so you may get a question like ma'am gfcf is only including like private investment no no it is not like that so even government investment is also coming under this capital formation under this gfcf and i hope it is clear right and this one is the biggest cost of low private investment that would be slower economic growth okay so whenever there is decreasing of this private investment and automatically economic growth will be slowing down okay so because of this we can say like private investment and capital formation it will be boosting the growth of the country so what is the reason the reason here is the failure of private investment because of decreasing of private consumption 
okay because of decreasing of private consumption expenditure so it is a primary reason for the decreasing of private investment in the last decade so this is the reason it said by many economists okay clear and now again one religious issue is in news okay so it is regarding bor shala kamal maula complex it is a dispute between hindu temple and muslim temple and you can get a question from this area so let us see without wasting any time so what is the context why it is in news because on march 22nd 13th century bor shala kamal maula complex where it is located in madhya pradesh so you can get a question like so bor shala kamal maula complex is in news so in which state it is located it is in madhya pradesh okay and it became like largest site for the scientific survey by this archaeological survey of india and even archaeological survey of india is seen highly in news so there is also like high chance of getting question regarding this asi also and if you see some important details the action followed the madhya pradesh high court which had on march 11th ordered asi to conduct a survey okay within 6 weeks and actually this temple complex is contested by hindus and muslims so hindus are saying that it, it used to be like vag devi temple and muslim is saying that it is kamal maula masjid so hindu front for justice petitioned in high court and this hindu front for justice is claiming that this is a complex it was built in 1034 and later on mosque was constructed during the reign of aladdin khalji in 13th century by destroying this ancient sculptures or ancient structures of previously constructed hindu temple okay so this is the thing and muslims are claiming that there was no existence of this uh, maula uh, like uh, there was no existence of the temple hindu temple okay hindu temple there was not present so this is the thing which mainly said and i want to discuss one more very important interesting topic that is indigenous built cruise missile successfully tested so i want to give you some dimensions so it is talking about long range subsonic cruise missile so from science and technology part defense is very important in this defense you will be studying like torpedoes helicopters aircraft jets okay and even missiles so this is one important part from your science and technology so here you have to understand what is this missile first one and you have to see like different types so types are based on different classification like based on the trajectory we have like ballistic and cruise based on the feel okay that we are using and based on the strategic location like uh, it is present inside the water or above the water so based on the launch so where we are launching like we have surface to surface surface to air air to air so like that we have different and based on the speed we have subsonic supersonic and hypersonic and based on the range long range medium range and uh, short range so in this way you have to know like exactly the classification and based on this classification you need to also remember examples so now the first indigenous subsonic cruise missile is nearby okay nearby and this is also like indigenous that had been tested and successfully the test had been passed by this indigenous built cruise missile so this article is saying that the defense research and development organization drdo conducted a successful flight test of a long range subsonic indigenously developed cruise missile okay so i want to show you like how this missile look like so first let us see what is the definition of missile so a missile it is a guided air drone ranger weapon and it is capable of a self propelled flight usually by a jet engine or a rocket motor so we are using like rocket motor or a jet motor and we are using it will be moving okay and here we have different parts like here we have propulsion system here we have fins and here we have wings this is the fuel area and warhead will be placed here and this is like control and guidance system so if you are talking about types of missiles based on speed because it said about like subsonic so i am taking like based on the speed so speed will be measured with the speed of sound okay so subsonic is nothing but it will be traveling slow compared to that of speed of sound it is called as subsonic for example in us we have harpoon and india we have prithvi 
like that in supersonic means nothing but it will be traveling more than the speed of sound that is 1 mach but less than 5 mach that will be from 1 to 5 mach the speed will be 1 to 5 mach it is less than 1 mach that is called as supersonic and Russia we have like Iskander and in India we have Brahmos and hypersonic is nothing but the speed will be more than the 5 times of the speed of sound okay for example in China they have DFZF and in Russia we have Avangrad and India we have Shaurya or Sagarika missiles okay so these are the very important topics which appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper and let us hold for other articles in our newspaper okay you can move on to this news page and most of the times in the news page you are seeing like political articles don't read this political articles and leave this elections page blindly it will be not having any work with our UPSC okay and here I discussed about this test of this missile and here you can see one more article that is WHO defines pathogens that transmit through air so what happens through aerosols also there is transmission of this disease is happening okay for example many viral infections for example corona also and here you can see one article that is India must invest in education health to tap demographic dividend says IMF so here it is very very important topic so here this article is talking about this keyword called as demographic dividend so you will be studying about this topic in your GS paper on geography under economic geography so under economic geography you will be studying this topic especially in this age pyramids so in this age pyramids you will be know like based on the shape of the pyramid we can say whether it is like country which is having old age population or engaged population so country with engaged population is said as country is enjoying this demographic dividend so demographic dividend means people between 15 to 64 years if they are in high percentage they are called as demographic dividend and that means i can say like it is a very youth stage that means youth population is more so whenever youth population is more so country can use that potential of youth right so how can a country use that youth potential whenever they are having proper skill so how they can get the skill through proper education through proper skill development through proper vocational training okay and proper health system so with these years we can use that demographic dividend or else this demographic dividend will go into like demographic disaster it will be very difficult for a country to deal with a demographic disaster okay so this is the thing which mainly said by IMF and IMF is seen highly in you so you can get some GK based questions from this IMF also and next topic is India FY that is financial 2024 pulse imports hit six year high on red lentils so we are importing more pulses so you have, here you have to see like which are the geographical conditions necessary for the growing of pulses and which states in India got this uh, uh, like they can grow these pulses and which soils we can grow these pulses and these soils are present in which states okay so these are the very important concepts that you have to see clear and now let me show you exactly where can you get the notes of this class So this is our Rathod's IS classes telegram channel. So do join this channel so that you can get the PDF of the class and whenever we are posting the video in the YouTube you will be getting updates here okay. And one more thing is this is Rathod's IS Academy YouTube channel. Do subscribe to this channel don't forget to subscribe. And Rathod's IS is also, for, is also providing like online foundation course for the students who can't come to this Hyderabad. So for them also we are providing online class and then this online class it is a combination of like recorded plus live sessions and each and everything is covered along with prelims test series and prelims booster course, main translating course and main translating practice, main test series, everything will be there and the cost of this course is 20,000 rupees only. That is 20,000 rupees only so you can join this course. 
and if you have any query regarding the offline or online courses you can call me on this number 8074765513 and prelims is very near if you want to take a single subject you can take the single subject as well and and here if you click on this play course three demo videos will be opened so you can watch the demo videos and after watching demo videos only you can go for payment of the course okay so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this class and if you really like this class hit the like button and don't forget to give the review and rating okay so this is my sincere request and don't forget to subscribe to the star thor science academy and please do share this video to your friends thank you so much